Understanding how the hips influence our movement and the low back is one of, if not the single most important biomechanical aspect of understanding and addressing low back pain. In 100% of cases of people that have low back pain in my gym, I want to understand what their hips are telling me. And I wanna understand what I can do to help address what's going on. Now I wanna preface this by saying that pain is biopsychosocial in nature. There are many, many things that can influence our perception of pain and the degree of which we feel it. And a lot of those things are outside the scope of this video. So I will be strictly discussing the biomechanical side of things. Now, every single person has asymmetrical hips to some extent. The question is just how much? and how are they presenting. People ultimately are going to have some degree of a higher hip on one side and a lower hip on the other side. The lower hip tends to be more forward and the higher hip tends to be more rotated back. What we're seeing here is a side that is being more loaded than the other side. The loaded side is going to be the side that is more high and the more forward side is going to be more of the unloaded or non weight bearing side. So if you were to stand up and then just lean over to one side, you're going to feel that hip hike up on that side. And that's what's being represented right here. Now, if I have back pain on this side, usually what I see is people are overloading this side of their body and they're unable to fully turn out of that side because the pelvis is gonna be facing that higher side because we're weight bearing on it, the shoulder is gonna be a little bit lower too. What we struggle to do on this side is push out of it and be able to turn our pelvis towards the other side. So usually this side right here is going to be stuck in an internally rotated position and you can't actually meaningfully access external rotation of the hip and turning of the pelvis towards the other side. The lower side, therefore, because it's not weight bearing, we struggle to shift into that side as much. So this side tends to be more externally rotated than the other side because the pelvis is turned towards the other side. So we struggle to shift that hip back and meaningfully load into it. And if we can't do that, then we're going to shift over to that side of our body. We can't shift there very well and then we crank our low back into a position, which is a compensatory way for us to shift into that hip. Usually what that looks like is a hip hike on that side. So as I enter stance phase of gait on that side, because this hip can't genuinely turn and be shifted into, we're going to have a tendency to hike that hip up like that. And that is a compensation to create internal rotation. Internal rotation is what we need in that stance phase of gait. So instead of genuinely turning into that space, I'm gonna get the femur to slide back because I'm gonna hike up that side of my hip. Now in terms of the higher side hip, because we struggle to push out of that side more effectively and get the pelvis to face the other side, usually what's going to happen is I'm gonna spend more time in stance phase on this side relative to the other. So I'm going to struggle to get my entire spine to orient to that side effectively. And I'm not gonna be able to get a genuine push through my glute max to help me do that. So typically what we see as a compensation is some sort of torquing of the low back to get a turn of the pelvis towards that side. And usually what this will visually manifest itself as is a lack of arm swing on that side. So typically when I'm going to take a step forward and turn to the other side, my arm is gonna come forward on that side. So typically what we see with these people is as they're walking, one arm is gonna swing further forward and that's usually the side that they're able to push out of better. So you're usually gonna see less arm swing with the side that really struggles to be pushed out of. And that means that the low back is going to twist usually in some way to create the extension and push out of that hip. And it's important to consider that arm swing is not just this right here. It's the movement of the actual humerus itself. So don't be fooled by elbow bend. Pay attention to what's happening right here. So you may be asking now, what do we do? Well, good news for you is I have released a very extensive and thorough guide on how to address this exact issue. Full of assessments, full of exercises. It's a great piece of content. So you can check that out down below in the description. But if you're looking for some very basic examples of exercises that can teach you how to genuinely 
turn from side to side more effectively, then there are some upright activities that you can do, and they're honestly very straightforward. Let's say I struggle to be able to get my hips and my trunk to turn to the left side because I'm stuck overloading my right side, which is quite common. Well, we can do the following exercises, which are, again, pretty easy to help us learn how to turn to the left side better. Now, this may not be a comprehensive approach for everyone, but this can be a pretty good idea of the types of exercises that can give some relief in the short and the long term. Now, getting people to genuinely shift from side to side is so important for so many things, not just even back pain. And that's why that is the primary focus of my beginner body restoration program. If you wanna learn more and see easy exercises for improving the ability for us, to shift from side to side and take stress off of places where there shouldn't be too much. You can see more about that in the link down below. What we're gonna do here is get in a hip width stance with the toes straight ahead, and we're going to get the left foot ahead one half step length. So the left midfoot is in line with the right toes. We're gonna get 75% of our weight on our right foot, 25% on our left, unlock both knees slightly. Now, if our pelvis was a bowl of water, we don't want it spilling out the front or the back. We want it nice and neutral, parallel with the floor. And then what we're gonna do is just gently reach the right arm forward, which is going to very slightly turn our trunk towards the left. As we do that, we should feel our left abs very slightly engaged. Now, we're gonna exhale, and every time we exhale, we're gonna gently shift about 10% more of our weight onto our left foot as our pant zipper orients to the left slightly more as well. As he exhales, he's gonna feel more side abs on the left and a little bit more inner thigh on the left as we transfer our weight over to the left. As he inhales, he's gonna hold the position. As he exhales, he's gonna go slightly further. And that's going to help rotate his sternum and his trunk to the left. If you're not feeling your inner thigh on the left, make sure your knee remains unlocked just slightly and your knee is staying over your first and second toe. It's not rotating out like that. From a side view, what we can see is as he reaches that right arm, keeping the pelvis neutral, he's still keeping his ribs back. He's not extending or slouching. He's making sure he keeps the same amount of height in his skeleton, and he's just gently turning his trunk. That's all the reach is doing. It's not making him do this or arching through the low back. What we're gonna do is get in a hip width stance with the toes straight ahead and a half step further with the right foot. So we have our right midfoot in line with our left toes. Now we're gonna get 75% of our weight on our left foot here, 25% on the right. So we're gonna shift over to the left slightly. And if our pelvis was a bowl of water, we don't wanna spilling out the front or the back excessively. We want a slight tuck so it's nice and neutral with the ground. And our knees are going to be unlocked on both sides. So the key here is we need to stay heavy on the left foot, but we're gonna reach the left arm straight ahead. Now here's the thing, we gotta make sure the sternum turns towards the left side. This is gonna help push us back on the left side. So what you should feel are the left side abs engage and the left inner thigh because the zipper is going to be facing this left foot as well. So all he's gonna do is breathe in through his nose, out through his mouth, maintaining this position. As he breathes in through his nose, he should feel some expansion, some stretching out in his upper back in between his left shoulder blade and his spine. And he's just gonna maintain that sternum position. Now from a side view, what it looks like is Notice how he's staying heavy on the left. He's gonna reach that left arm. Everything is facing left and the ribs are being pushed back slightly on the left. It's not like he's going to slouch. He's gonna make sure that he's staying nice and tall, keeping a slight tuck of the hips, ribs back, sternum is left, and all you're gonna do is maintain that position. The most common mistake on this is people are going to extend through their low back. So they're gonna to reach too far and too aggressively. Just make sure that reach is about a four or five out of 10. Doesn't need to be much and you're keeping a nice slight round here while not losing any height in your skeleton. 